I mean, at this point, it's like a part-time job for me. They make so many anti-gay, anti-queer videos with just completely wrong information, massive bias, outright lies, and then I have to swoop in and spend time debunking it and providing everyone with real, actual information. Um, they should be paying me to do this. That is, if they actually gave a shit about giving correct information, which they don't. Uh, every video that they make when it comes to a queer person is just full of lies and massive personal bias. The only requirement that you need for watching these videos is for you to hate gay people as much as they do, for you to hate queer people as much as they do, and then you are welcome into these videos with open arms. All right, so let's take a look at the title and thumbnail for this video. As you can see, I've watched about a minute of it, and then I decided, hey, I've got to swoop in and talk about this. It's titled Devastating with a Period and an awful thumbnail, uh, incentivizing you to click on it because uh, Elliot Page somehow is a danger to kids, where he's in this thumbnail looking like he just took a big bong hit uh, with leave the children alone. It's this, what about the kids fallacy? It's been used for years to sort of uh, create a wedge for communities who are marginalized by making them look evil because they're put in a no-win scenario. And uh, it's one of those arguments that you'll see quite often from conservative people, right-leaning people who want to make it seem as if anybody in a marginalized community, in this case, trans people or gay people, are doing something insidious. It's a very common uh, scenario they use to sort of win an argument. It's garbage. It's bullshit. We're going to break it down. Let's go. Last week, we covered uh, Paige. Previously on X-Men. Preferred by now, uh, pronouns are now he, him, and they, them. And Paige self-identifies as non what, 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 Which, wait a minute, which one is it? So, it's both. We talked about this. Surprise, mother... Uh, the artist formerly known as uh, Ellen Page. And... That was transphobia, by the way. Just making you aware of that. Canada's version of the Grammy Awards called the Juno Awards. And I'm I'm going to quote this insane thing that, that Ellen or Elliot or they, them, Sherm, Herm, hymns. Transphobia had to say, we are at a time in history where the rights of the LGBTQ2 plus, not sure what that means. Well, I'm going to educate you because you could literally just open up another tab and talk about it. So uh, the, the two plus is a almost uniquely Canadian uh, addition to the letters. And uh, what it is, is it represents a third gender. Uh, within the native community of Canada. And there's a lot of variations on that if you go deep into their history uh, and look into it. And um, it is a community that is has been getting a lot more visibility lately to the point where Canada is actually recognizing them and uh, adding them into their queer umbrella. Uh, that would have taken you like literally five seconds to open another tab and type that in to find out what it was. But you don't care about that, just like the people that watch you don't care about that. What? People are being revoked, restricted, and eliminated throughout the world, and the effects are devastating. Okay. Now, think about that. I don't know if this person is referring to Saudi Arabia or something, and they toss some folks off the roof. I'll oh, that's funny. So throwing people off of a roof, killing them, because they're gay or trans is a joke. It's a joke to you, right? Uh, let me let you in on a little bit of information. There's over 60 countries where being queer is illegal. It is illegal. And there's like, I don't know, there was like seven, eight, maybe 10 at this point countries where you can actually be, uh, you know, unalived. Um, the list here, I, I just pulled it up. Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, Somalia, Sudan, um, that's just a few of them where you could be put to death for being queer. So there's a lot more than that, but again, it's just easier for you to not even look that up and just speak directly to the bigots, uh, that are watching your videos. It's easier to do that because it requires you to do absolutely nothing except, uh, spout out bigotry. I think that's what they are talking about though. The article that's coming from Breitbart goes to talk about Sarah Quinn of the pop duo Tegan and Sarah told Juno audience, if the world was not hostile to LGBTQ2 plus people, we would see ourselves purely as musicians. Um, they criticized Alberta 
recently proposing to restrict health care for transgender youth, including halting access to hormone therapy for children. OK, what is, who is this? Sarah Quinn. OK, so Sarah Quinn, I don't know if anybody listens to the pop duo of Tegan and Sarah. Well, a lot of people do, actually. They're far more popular than backwards. That's for sure. Massively successful uh, internationally, extremely successful in their own country. Um, and they've done a lot of work for the queer community in Canada and around the world. So just a lot more important than you are, by far. But they apparently are for uh, castration. No, they're not. I don't think you understand what castration is. You're using that word because it's sensational. You're using it because it immediately grabs into the base that you're talking to. Um, castration is something completely different from providing health care for queer youth. Uh, which is what people are arguing for. These are things that should be handled between the parents, the kids, and their healthcare providers, period. You should have nothing to say about this uh, because not only are you not the parent of a queer child, you're not queer yourself, and you are not overseeing the healthcare of these children. Um, so you are out here stoking bigotry, transphobia, homophobia, all of the above. I know you guys like when I say these words, um, but he's doing all of it. Let's continue. Chemically, perhaps, at minimum. No. Nope. Because apparently it is controversial to restrict children from going through things that may do irreparable damage. Okay, so when you say that now, it is your, you have to provide something, pull up something on your screen that talks about that to show that, um, because otherwise it's just trust me, bro. And you're not a doctor. We've gone through this before, Eric. We've done this, this song and dance before. You're not a doctor. You're not somebody in the healthcare field. So if you're going to say something like that, you have to provide some information. So let me provide some inf information for you um, that people can actually research and look up. So I'm going to do what you're not willing to do because you know this would break the illusion. It would ruin this whole grifty thing you got going on. Uh, are puberty blockers permanent? What you should know before treatment. Very first line right here. Puberty blockers are a safe and effective way to treat precarious puberty and gender dysphoria. Safe and effective way. And there's a whole article here from Healthline and many other articles that talk about this in detail. But none of this matters because neither you nor I are a healthcare professional treating somebody for gender dysphoria. So our opinions on that are completely pointless unless we have someone in our family that we are caring for that is going through this process or ourselves, we need help with this process. Outside of that, this is a conversation that should be done between healthcare providers, family members, and, and patients. And that's it. What is it going to kill y'all? Can y'all just leave the kids alone? Let's talk. Is that what you're referring to? Now, granted, that's a different statement from what Paige was. I mean, we could throw that back in your face. Could you leave the kids alone? Let's just break down what we're talking about here. We're talking about access to medication. We're talking about therapists, doctors, parents, kids, that whole unit coming together and deciding what treatment would be best for their gender dysphoria. And then the doctors and the therapists and the people in the medical field, a lot smarter than you and I going, yeah, maybe this is the treatment we can go with. Maybe this will work. We're talking about allowing that access for parents of children, for them to be, be able to make those decisions. Your outrageous, just completely wild theories and accusations about people like that is not like people going after children. You have to understand that you are saying here, you are drawing a parallel to people who are advocating for access to medical care through doctors and therapists for families and, and, and uh, queer children. You're saying that people simply advocating for that are somehow coming after people's kids. Do you realize just how dangerous and disgusting that is what's saying but let's let's dissect that part on what planet if we're talking about the west are they being restricted and eliminated again if you're talking about saudi Arabia, they're they're not talk. well some places are trying that's for sure but we're talking about the rest of the world pay attention here i understand that you're completely ignorant on this subject but pay attention to what's going on here arabia and maybe some of these Middle Eastern countries, maybe Africa, where they don't tolerate that. Okay, but that ain't what you're talking about. Let's get let's How do you know? Are you reading their minds? Are you reading their minds? You hate when people do this to you. When people get on here and go, oh, let's talk about the Ripaverse and your intentions for your characters and all this. And you're like, how do you know what I'm saying? How do you know? You can't read my mind, but you're literally doing that for them right now. Be 100 about it. On what planet? 
are they being restricted? Because from all accounts, everywhere we look, we can't get rid of it. Hell. I mean, that's because you're on you're on trans watch. You're on trans watch. You're on gay watch, Eric. You've already admitted this. The other day in that video you made where you said that you couldn't believe that you missed uh, a video where some drag queens were promoting a video game. You were really upset that you missed that. You were on queer watch. You you were waiting on bated breath for any news to come your way that talks about gay and trans people. So yes, you can't avoid it because you love it. You love talking about this stuff. Me and ass, Hill versus Babyface. I'll see you in the next video. You take care. On our show, he can't go to the grocery store. What out there? Oh, we're going back to that again. Yeah, that's because both of you are weak as fuck, especially as who is extremely weak as fuck. Being pride flags everywhere. Why are you gay? On what planet are you being eliminated? What planet? This one. You've already mentioned. You said Middle East, Africa. So you were aware of it when you just lied. So you're just lying about it. You're just outright telling untrue shit. So on this planet, because this is the only one that we live on, where because again there were separate comments i want to be very fair to page elliot page but i hope to god y'all are crazy enough to think that you are being eliminated because people are saying look if you want to be gay to the point to where you want to chop you gay people don't do that that's that's not a gay thing that is gender dysphoria um but you know i guess you have to make a joke out of everything you, you want to remove certain elements of, of your, uh, you thought God made a mistake. Well, here's the thing though. Like there are states that are trying to prevent healthcare for trans people as adults. Something else you're completely just leaving out of this. And at this point now, I believe you know all of this and you're just lying to your audience uh, because being outrageous and saying this dumb shit gets clicks on your videos. We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. You see yourself as something else and you want to start cutting stuff off. Well, I mean, if God doesn't make mistakes, why do people need glasses? Needing glasses is a very common correction that people get done because their vision doesn't work correctly. And so they go to their doctors, their doctors figure out that, hey, you need this, you're nearsighted, you're farsighted, whatever. Um, so this argument that God doesn't make mistakes as, an, as like an anti-trans argument is just, again, transphobia. I might think that's crazy. And on an emotional tip, psychologically maybe, I will pray for you. I mean, gender dysphoria is, is treated by therapists. So there are people that struggle with this, which is why healthcare, especially mental health, is very important. But it's something that you guys also don't seem to believe in and don't want available for trans people or queer people. For you. Don't pray for because me. Because I God didn't make the mistake, man. And maybe you and I don't see eye to eye on that. Fine. Because I would at least concede this. As an adult, you have the right to chop your stuff off. I mean, they just go to this every single time. Just that in, that entire, like, pushing towards, like, body cha changes to your body, modifications, whatever you might call it. All, all of these things are transphobic in nature because he keeps going to that. Trans people do not require any sort of surgeries to be trans. You have to understand that. A trans person is a trans person, whether they have any sort of breast surgery, any other changes to their body, they are still trans people. Some trans people never even have that level of surgery. So you keep going to that thinking that some sort of thing that every single trans person has done, and that's just not true. I might not agree with it. And a lot of people are going to voice that disagreement. But you having the right to do that is one thing. But you mean to tell me, and I hope to God this isn't what Paige is referencing, that you're going to consider that a threat among you or this community because people believe that, damn it, bro, wait until you're 18 years old and stop pushing this stuff on kids. Because they're saying that the kids and the families and these doctors should have access to this type of health care. They're not saying that some kid can go into a, a hospital and say, hey, sign me up for uh, any sort of medication. You might have puberty blockers, whatever. Go ahead and sign me up. We're good to go. Thanks. Okay, I'm heading out. That's not what they're saying. And the fact that you think it's that easy and it's that simple, I mean, 
you're spreading lies and disinformation to your viewers. You're a mouthpiece for bigotry and propaganda. We, we can't even agree to that. We can't agree to that. Well, you just leave these children out of this. Just, just. We, there's no reason for us to agree to agree to that. There's no reason for that. You and I do not have queer children. You and I are not trans people. You and I are not doctors, healthcare providers, or any of those things. There's no reason for us to agree on that. That is something that should be decided between the family, the kid, and the doctors. That is where that lies, not between you and I. I've always advocated for that. You can go back to the videos where I've talked about this before. I believe healthcare decisions should be made between the patient, the family, and the doctors. That is where that lies. Trying to take away healthcare options from anybody for any reason is insanity. They're definitely talking about them and taking all these pills and stuff. Like, leave them out of it. Is that what you mean by elimination? Because people are saying, okay, that's a little too far. I hope. No, because you yourself said they're two separate statements. That's what you said. You were looking at Elliot Page's statement and Sarah Quinn's statement, and you said they're two separate statements, but now you are putting them together. You are the one combining them because this is the narrative you want to build for this video. Hope to God not. But just on... Even if we're talking about adults, I have no idea what Paige is referencing when she's talking about them being restricted all over. 60 plus countries. I think it was like 63, 64 countries where it's illegal to be a queer person. Upwards of 10 countries where you can put, be put to death for being a queer person. Stop being so ignorant. The world, because we can't do anything without your opinion or your position being considered or represented in anything. Not anymore. Doesn't matter where there's games, doesn't matter if it's comic books, doesn't man, equality feels like oppression, doesn't it? Doesn't it feel that way? I remember a time when I was growing up where I didn't see a gay person in anything. And as a gay person, I'm like, man, I would love once in a while to see myself in something that I love. Give me a crumb, give me one thing in this sea of things that I can see myself in. And now that we have a few crumbs, all of a sudden the status quo is threatened. The matter if it's going to the grocery store, it does not matter. There will for sure be something gay in it. So what are you talking about? I don't know. <sighs> all right. Um, yeah, that was exactly what I expected it to be. Uh, I'm under the impression now that Eric does sort of have an idea of some of the stuff he's talking about. He just refuses to acknowledge it. He refuses to be honest with his viewers because the bigotry itself is what pulls in views. The way he acts and talks about gay people and trans people pulls in views. He is talking to a dumb group of people watching his videos, extremely dumb, and he's taking advantage of how dumb they are by leaving out information on purpose to spread bigotry and hatred towards queer people. My final stance on this, and this will always be my stance on it, is access to life-saving medical care to make your life better, whether it be glasses, crutches, a wheelchair, medication for gender dysphoria, whatever it may be, whatever those things are, should be available for someone to have, and those things should be discussed with the patient, the doctor, and any family members that need to be included in that period. That is my stance on it. That will always be my stance. I do not believe I have the right to tell somebody else that health care that they may need to make their life better or for them to not want to do something to themselves, something bad. It, I don't believe that I should have the right to tell people they can't have that, especially when I don't have a dog in the fight, when I'm not in the situation at all. Eric and everybody else in his community that wants to do this, it is not about protecting anybody. It's not about saving anybody. It is about oppression and control. The fact that he already dislikes seeing gay people and trans people in stuff and he can't stop bringing it up means that he does not have the best interest of gay or trans people. Therefore, his opinions about the health care of gay and trans people is null and void because he does not care about the best, best interest of any of us.